Birsa Munda, the tribal king and warrior. The Indian independence movement was a kaleidoscopic mixture of people from all walks of life, truly representing the unity in diversity sentiment to the highest level of accuracy. It was a union of patriots whose sole aim was to free their nation from the oppressive and suppressive reign of the British rulers. They came together irrespective of their age, gender, wealth, background, religion or caste, unified in their goal and assured in their actions. One among them was a freedom fighter who represented the tribal community and shared the same passion for freedom as the other activists. This is the story of Birsa Munda, the tribal warrior and freedom fighter, who, as the prophet of the Munda tribe and the father of the earth, is hailed by his people for his unwavering courage and efforts in ousting the British Empire from India and securing the freedom and rights of his tribal community. Early life Birsa Munda was born to Suvana Munda and Karmi Hatu in the Uli Hatu village located in the Lohar Daga district of Bengal Presidency, present-day Khunti district in Jharkhand on 15th November 1875 or 18th July 1872 according to some sources and was named after the day he was born, Thursday, as per the Munda customs observed during the time. He had a brother named Komta Munda and two sisters named Daskir and Champa. His family travelled a lot during his early years in search of a steady employment. Much of his early life is depicted in folklores, from spending his childhood with his parents and friends, playing around in mud and dust, to growing up to be a strong young man who grazed sheep in the Bohonda forest. Birsa is said to have been a talented flute player, developing his expertise in it from a young age itself. He also used to spend his time in the village wrestling grounds. However, the Munda family lived in a state of poverty and hence faced several problems in their lives. Birsa was later sent to his maternal uncle's house in Ayubhatu, education. Birsa lived in Ayubhatu for two years. He eventually joined a school run by Jaipal Nag at Salga. Being extremely smart in studies, he later joined the German Mission School, where he adopted the identity of Birsa David or Birsa Daud, as he was later known as, after converting to Christianity. Due to the rising national public agitation and also identifying the manipulative techniques employed by the British on the innocent Indians, his father later unenrolled him from the missionary school. This was followed by them giving up their Christian identities and going back to their traditional customs. Political Activities Birsa Munda's conflict with religious identity was one of the main factors that prompted him to take a hawk stance against the British when he realized that it just gave them another opportunity to manipulate the Indians to their needs. From rejecting the religion imposed upon them to creating an alternate one, his involvement in the Indian independence movement started from his school years and came in many forms. The years that he spent in Chalibasa, starting from 1886 till 1890, is noted as the most remarkable and influential period of his life, marking the point when he formulated his own anti-colonial feelings and thoughts and transforming into a political activist and freedom fighter due to the impact of the Sardari agitation in the area. Birsai. Perhaps no other freedom fighter can be credited with the creation of a new religion like Birsa Munda, who worked hard towards eliminating the British who tried to convert his tribal community into Christians. His payback to them came in the form of a new religion known as Birsai. The introduction of such an alternate faith enabled several individuals to similarly give up on their Christian identity and convert into the new religion which only served to take away the British power over Indians and simultaneously give more power to the tribal warrior and his religion. He himself underwent a transformation into a healer and representative of his community. 
giving him a godlike status among his people who sought his blessings and wishes. However, things took a turn for the worse when Birsa was arrested on 24th August 1895 due to a rumour that spread among people stating that all non-followers of Birsa would be massacred. He was incarcerated for two years because of this. Following his release, he left to Chutia with his followers on 28th January 1898 to prove his racial connections with the temple that belonged to the Coles. The widespread impact of his rebellion led to the heavy loss of converts for the British, who wanted to arrest Bersa for his actions. As a result, the tribal leader had to cautiously move around without getting caught while attending secret meetings. This clandestine attendance continued for about two years. The Munda Ulgulan, Abua Raj Etejana, Maharani Raj Tundujana. Let the kingdom of the queen be ended and our kingdom be established. Birsa Munda gave rise to the revolutionary Munda revolt known as Ulgulan that aimed at protesting against the unjust and illegal agrarian activities carried out by the British government. The exploitation of the tribal lands by the British for profit made the tribal warrior extremely upset as the introduction of outsiders through the feudal zamindari system resulted in extreme poverty for its true owners. This gave rise to the 1899 revolt around the time of Christmas under the leadership of Birsa Munda, the Dharti Aba, who wanted to establish the Munda Raj Kingdom for his people. With the support of about 7,000 men and women of his tribal community who internalized Munda's explosive sentiments about ending the Queen's reign, Munda headed a revolution that later spread to other areas, including Rachi. Openly declaring the British as their enemies, the followers attacked those places faithful to the British for two years continuously. As a result of the revolt, on 5th and 7th January 1900, police officers at Etkedi and Khunti police station died at the hands of Munda's followers. They had to be contained by around 150 police officers headed by the local commissioner A. Forbes and the deputy commissioner A. C. Streetfield at Khunti. This led to a bounty on Birsa Munda's head for an amount of rupees 500. When the army under the command of Forbes and Streetfield were able to overcome and defeat the Munda rebels at Dumbari Hill, Birsa Munda managed to evade their capture and escape to Singbhum Hills. However, on 3rd February 1900, he was arrested by the authorities from the forests of Jamkopai in Chakradharpur, death. In the resulting investigation that followed Birsa Munda's arrest, about 15 criminal cases were filed against 460 tribals, leading to the conviction of 63 of them. There were numerous transportations and imprisonments granted to the convicts. Six of them passed away during the time of trial, out of which one was the beloved Birsa Munda, the embodiment of hope and justice for innumerable people, who is said to have died of cholera in the prison in Banchi. The date of 9th June 1900 therefore became a day of utmost loss and heartache for the Munda tribe who lost one of their most formidable leader and representative of their community. In the aftermath of his death, the government established the Chota Nagpur Tenancy Act CNT in 1908. According to the Act, the transfer of tribal lands to non-tribal people were prohibited, thereby protecting the interests and rights of the tribal community. Legacy The origin and sacrifice of Birsa Munda is a tremendous legacy of India and its people. His actions are honoured so much in his country that it gave birth to the state of Jharkhand on the birth anniversary of the legendary tribal figure. He also happens to be the only tribal leader who has his portrait hanged in the central hall of the Indian parliament.
Recently, on 10th November 2021, it was decided by the Union Cabinet of the Indian Government that Birsa Munda's birth date of 15th November will be declared Janjati Gaurav Divas in remembrance of all the tribal leaders of the freedom struggle. Also, a stamp bearing his image was released as a tribute to him in 1988. Such was the impact of his contributions to the independence movement that numerous educational and public structures and buildings have been built in his name. A few of these include the Birsa Agricultural University, Birsa Institute of Technology, Birsa College, Kunti, Birsa Munda Airport in Rachi, to name a few. The great independence activist has been a huge source of inspiration to a number of individuals. So much so that the Bihar Regiment has adopted the phrase Birsa Munda Ki Jai or Victory to Birsa Munda as their war cry. Additionally, the National University of Study and Research in Law in Rachi conducts an annual college fest named Ulgulan that is yet again inspired by the independence activities of Munda. The literary world did their justice to the leader through the work of Mahashweta Devi in the 19th century when she was awarded the Sahitya Akademi Award for Bengali in 1979 for her novel Oronir Odhikar or Right to the Forest, 1977 that describes the events of the Munda revolt along with the individual who spearheaded it. An abridged version on Munda was later released by her, catering to young readers. The life and times of Birsa Munda is another literary dedication to the freedom fighter made by the author Gopi Krishna Kunwar. There is no dearth of contributions to the warrior in the film industry either. The movies Ulgulan Ek Kranti or The Revolution by Ashok Saran and the Birsa Munda, The Black Iron Man, made by Rajesh Mittal, are both based on the Freedom Fighter and released in the year 2004. In 2008, Iqbal Duran directed a movie titled Gandhi Se Pehle Gandhi or Gandhi Before Gandhi, based on the life of Birsa Munda. The film was based on the novel of the same name written by Duran. The most recent biographical short film was titled Bhagwan Birsa Munda, made by the Indian director and producer Rajan Khosa and was released in the year 2020. Two other movies, one in Tamil and the other in Hindi, are both in the pipelines to be made based on Birsa Munda's life and contributions by Gopi Nayanar and P. A. Ranjit respectively. Furthermore, a proposal was made to install a 150 feet tall statue of Ulgulan made from the native household stones in Jharkhand. The statue is proposed as a tribute to the hero Birsa Munda. Conclusion Being an exemplary leader and the voice of hundreds of marginalized tribal people, Birsa Munda spent his life striving to safeguard the interests of his community as well as to protect them from being exploited by the British regime. Regarded as the first tribal freedom fighter, his dedication and courage to sacrifice his life so as to ensure the well-being of his people will forever be remembered by his country and his countrymen as they carry his legacy forward to greater heights.